Good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning. Um, a very warm welcome uh, to all of you um, who are joining us this morning for this webinar, uh, connecting on all platforms um, on our official Zoom platform. Uh, we're also streaming live on Facebook. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. My name is Happy uh, Makuma Longidi. I am the Chief Marketing Officer a proudly South African, and today I'm also your uh, program director. A very warm welcome to all of you, including all our speakers who are online this morning, who have, um, you know, heeded our call and um, graciously accepted our invitation to join us for this, what we view as a critical discussion to have uh, today in the context of the uh, of uh, you know the economy where we are uh, as a country uh, from an economy point of view where we are as a country given the um, the, the 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 pandemic that the world faces uh, and, and 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 in general where we are in 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 as far as um, our collective and individual efforts to try and ensure that uh, local businesses stay afloat uh, one way or another. The, the, the title of our discussion today is Building a Transformed, Resilient, and Sustainable Tourism Sector Through Localization. It would seem localization is really um, our number one priority for, for, you know, for a lack of a better word, uh, given all the unemployment challenges that we face as a country. Uh, you know, given the fact that unemployment is truly such a persistent challenge for the country, uh, you know, our our level of thinking and our loyalty to local products and local services in the context of the tourism sector we're talking to and about today would seem to be to be a um, a doable option. Uh, so to speak. Um, we all know that it's been very hard. Uh, you know, the tourism sector has been particularly, particularly um, dealt a blow uh, by the pandemic. Even prior to that, you know, our economy was, uh, was uh, a little uh, wobbly um, and, uh, and, and the pandemic was really just uh, the last thing that we need, need uh, as a country and as the, as the sector. But, it, but it, you know, it, uh, there isn't, it's not all doom and gloom. Uh, you know, the past weekend was Heritage Weekend. It was amazing to see South Africans out there doing, uh, you know, what they, what they, you know, had to do over the weekend. But also to see a bit of a domestic travel happen in the country over, over the past weekend. And hopefully people still uh, taking into consideration uh, COVID regulations because, uh, you know the uh, the um, we may be going through a better time in terms of uh, uh, the pandemic and uh, infections and all of that, uh, but it does not mean that we are out of the woods as yet. So we still have to wear masks, sanitize, and really be be cautious. Whether we are vexed or not, uh, we still have to be extremely careful. But like I said, it was really it felt like spring has sprung. For the first time this weekend, as South Africans went about their business and it took, you know, several short lifts around the country, which was great. Uh, but also on the back of the fact that, um, you know, September is tourism month. So we're hoping that with this discussion today, as we slowly but surely open up the economy again, that we can learn from experts, find out what is going on in the in the in the tourism sector. Uh, and really walk away from this uh, discussion later on today with um, newfound uh, hope and faith uh, that uh, as much as we are going through a, a turbulent kind of uh, environment the world over, but uh, it's, 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 it's not over. It's not over. We can still roll up our sleeves and make and be the difference that we would like to see. So today we have a bumper packed um, uh, uh, program. <coughs> Excuse me, we have a bumper packed program 
And um, today, excuse me about that. Today we have a bumper pack program and we have a panel of experts that are going to talk to us this morning. Uh, we will hear from a colleague of mine from Proudly South African who will step in and just give us a tone about why we we organize these kind of uh, engagements every now and then as and when necessary. And uh, we will hear from a colleague uh, from um, the uh, SATSA uh, who will take us through, um, you know, why and share their contribution with us, Pagamile Shazo. We will also hear from Wendy Alberts, who's a friend of the campaign, um, who is the CEO of the Restaurants Association. Of South Africa and Tantla Kumalo is General Manager Tourism Development um, uh, KwaZulu Natal. And uh, Comet Motimela is Director of Touch Let's Go Travel and who is a member of the Proudly South African Movement. And last but not least, we'll hear from Rosemary Anderson, who is National per a Chairperson for FEDASA. Uh, so thank you so, so much. And without further ado, I'm going to request that those of you online would like to engage us. This discussion is also for you. Uh, you're not invited here to just uh, listen in and have no opinion. So please, we encourage you to send your questions and or comments uh, to any of the speakers uh, that are online uh, and you can send them on the chat, on the chat uh, uh, box or through questions and, a, uh, questions and answers. And also if you are logging on from a, uh, on a Facebook platform, you're also welcome to uh, send us comments and questions there. And the team will be on the lookout for that and they'll send them through to me and I will disperse them accordingly. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome our first speaker who is going to set the tone uh, on behalf of Proudly South African. And she is my uh, fellow executive manager um, who is uh, responsible for strategy, stakeholder relations and legal at Proudly South African, Janine Van Stratton. Uh, welcome, Janine. Thank you very much, Happy. And good morning, everybody. It gives me great pleasure to be with you today. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to hop right into it. I know um, time is of the essence and there are wonderful speakers that will that will be sharing thoughts and ideas with you and also their experiences. So I look forward to their inputs today. I'm going to share my screen with you now. Wonderful. I think that is a success. And then I shall um, stop my video while I present. Thank you very much. Fantastic. So it gives me great pleasure to share with you our mandate today um, to, to give you some insight into what Proudly South African has been up to these 20, 20 years um, and uh, just to showcase how we've grown what, and just to remind those on the call today what our mandate is all about. So as everybody knows, the, the country has been facing this triple challenge for quite some time and um, Proudly South African was really established to to, to, to hone in on the unemployment part of the triple challenge. Um, it was, just in, uh, we were established in 90, in 2001, but it came about, uh, the idea for a bi-local campaign for the country um, came about in the 1998 job summit that Madiba hosted. So we are, we are an idea of Madiba's and we're quite very, very, very um, proud, of, uh, proud of that fact. And um, but just to just to take us all back a step, um, the buy local phenomenon is is really something that's celebrated within a lot of countries. It's not just just special for South Africa. Um, they, um, we were we were uh, modeled around the Australian made campaign. And since then, it's it's really taken on a life of its own because of all the um, all the uh, policy issues that pertain to, to South Africa, as well as uh, if you if you look at the health of industry. Um, et cetera. So proudly South African had to had to be agile and, and really look uh, to what is necessary um, for the um, uh, of, uh, to, to really uh, to be um, to be relevant for the country and its needs. Um, there's also in the USA, there's legislation that's enforced uh, in terms of of buying local, which is very interesting and, and various others. And, and we'll be happy to share the, these presentations with you while my presentation, I'll share that with with the team that they, they can make that available. 
And then also, um, if you if you look at the African continent, uh, continent there are a number of other bi-local campaigns, which which we are also uh, we also, which we also um, have consulted those countries and and really to assist our our neighbours and also to see how they can flourish. Um, the US, U.S. is very special given that there is legislation to to really um, to really encourage encourage the government to buy local as as with 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 South Africa. But also um, just just looking there are quite it's quite intensive in terms of in terms of the um, America supporting their own. And it's really something that that I think South Africa can can really take note of and and also take on board. Um, the importance of localization, the obvious is what we are stand, what we stand for is by South African to create jobs, but by proudly South African to create jobs. So it's retain or creating jobs. It's also contributing to skills development and, of course, economic development. If you spend within the borders of the country, you keep the money inside. Um, empowerment, uh, improved living standards, infrastructure development, the increase of the GDP, and also looking at um, a balance of trade, increase exports um, that decrease the imports, which is also talking about an import replacement project that we are that we are um, a part of. So these are quite they are quite um, expected. These these uh, the importance of localizations. These reasons we all know these reasons, but often we forget. And uh, it's very important for for proudly South African to remind everybody why it is important to choose local. Um, and I've mentioned that uh, that we were established in 2001. We answer our board is made up of, of the social partners that form part of NEDLAC. Um, so we do have bosses in all spheres of society and we have an independent chairman. But we are really influencing the, the private sector to buy local. Uh, we talk to the public sector. There's legislation that assists us in, in that task. But we also lobby for, for the, uh, the public sector to support local. We also um, appeal to the consumer. Uh, so we do consumer education about the importance of buying local. So we do label of origin um, um, education drives, you know, for, 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 for the, the consumer to really turn the, the product over and choose made in South Africa when they buy if they don't see the Proud ESA logo, which, which does stand out. It's on the right hand side of your screen. And then, of course, it's all good and well to have products available, but and for people to buy products, but um, and support local service providers. But if they don't know where to find them, it makes it all all the more difficult. So we have uh, numerous projects in place to really promote accessibility of locally made products and services. So I must I must um, exclaim that that Proudly South African is not just there for manufacturers. It's also, it's also a buy local campaign to support local service providers. And we'll showcase the ways in which, in which we do that. So we've got a number of initiatives in place. Uh, so where does Proudly's SA stand in the mix? Um, so it's pretty much, um, it is a, a buy local campaign that can be supported from all spheres of this value chain. So we're looking at the retail value chain. So uh, we offer membership to manufacturers. Or service providers, and, and then we also uh, we are we encourage uh, we encourage retailers to join the fold, um, so that when you do go go on uh, when you do go into the stores, for instance, that that you do find locally made products on the shelves, and then we also lobby with consumers to buy uh, to buy the locally made goods. So we're pretty much in the middle of the whole value chain um, in order in order for us to to achieve our mandate. And we'll and I'll showcase um, ways of us doing that. I mentioned that we that we do invite manufacturers and service providers to become members of Proudly South African. So uh, you might ask if you're on the line today, can you be a member? Um, so we do invite organisations. So if you if you run an NGO or or if you uh, uh, we we have schools on our on our books as members, we have service providers on as members as well as uh, manufacturers. Uh, so commercial entities, MPOs, um, et cetera, really are all invited to become members of Proudly South African. We also have a number of, um, um, we also have a musician on board, for instance, so, and, and an author. So whenever they publish, they utilize the logo and really live and breathe the ethos of what the campaign stands for. Um, so in order for any organization uh, to come on board as a member, we have to vet companies in according to four for in accordance with four key criteria. So that is our logo on the left-hand side. 
And if you can have a look at it, you'll notice that the colors of the flag are embedded in the logo. So uh, that stands uh, for local, co uh, local content. We can't invite just any really nilly company who manufactures ab abroad and somebody imports it to, to, uh, for a made in China product to carry the Proudly SA logo. We really do need uh, the, the, we really do need the products to be made locally or the services to be provided locally. And we, and our membership team uh, will do due diligence in that regard. So they'll ask questions. Where do you get your raw material from? Where's the conversion of that raw material taking place? We'll also look at, are you, what, uh, what service are you providing? Are you supporting other local companies around you? Are you uplifting the community? How many people are you uh, employing, et cetera? We'll ask all of these questions, which will get us to the local content percentage that's needed. And then we also must ensure that somebody in uh, the regulator or, or, uh, or SABS, for instance, has vetted the, the product in accordance with, with what the industry requires. So I know SATSA is online, so we, we'd want to know that you are a member of SATSA, for instance. So, so that's very important because we can't have any service that's below par. It's not monitored or regulated by any, any um, body that is the expert in their field or a, a product that could hurt a consumer. We have to be quite cognizant about that. Um, so we accept these, these uh, certificates, um, whether you are belonging to an association or if you're making a product, we need to know uh, that it's been tested and it's passed the test. Then we also look at, uh, is the company a responsible corporate citizen? Does it adhere to environmental standards that, that really looks after the green environment? And also, do, 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 does the company um, look after the employees? Do they adhere to the Basic Conditions of Employment Act? So if all four of those key criteria have been, um, have been uh, answered and we've got a tick be behind each, then that company is eligible to become a member of Proudly South Africa. Our value proposition is is really really um, uh, comprehensive. Um, so we the the biggest uh, the biggest uh, benefit for being a member of Party South African is the use of the logo. It's trademarked, so not in everybody can use it, and it really does stand for local content and quality. Uh, we have a number of access to market platforms. So remember, I mentioned the accessibility of locally made products and services is very important. So we have a, a wonderful um, platform, uh, predominantly that talks to consumers buying local through RSA Made. It's an online e-commerce platform. So we have consumers that can buy a member product on RSA Made. We also look um, and monitor, assist the DTIC to monitor designation. So there is legislation in place whereby government has to buy local. And there are a number of products um, in place. There are 27, we're almost standing on 29 that they have to buy local. So we have a, an algorithm, a tender monitoring function. We, uh, we extract tenders um, from that function and send that to our member companies. And just keep in mind, it's all related to designation. And then we also, in the same breath, send those tenders on to the DTIC to monitor whether, whether government has correctly captured that local content percentage, um, that threshold. Um, and um, this system, um, even though it monitors what government does as the tender is being published, um, keep in mind that the DTIC can come in at any time before the tender is awarded. Um, and even as the tender has been awarded, they are allowed to step in to actually um, um, to request that that tender um, be withdrawn. Um, they do have that power, but we are also working quite closely with them to, to see how, 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 how better we can uh, assist them to, to, to really um, to make, the, uh, to make the procurement of government more effective. Um, and then we also have a database of local products and services. Um, and this is really important because we have a number of companies. So when you come on board as a member, we'll ask you in terms of Poppy to be able to share your details then with, with relevant uh, buyers, because that's why we're here. We want, we want the private sectors to support their own, to support Proudly South African. So it's very important that we'll be able to share your details in terms of procure for procurement reasons with, with potential buyers. And we've got, uh, we've got this database in place. So we had a wonderful example of a member company of ours in, in, this, in, in this industry, Toho San, who, who were thinking to, to buy only locally made televisions. And Hisense, of, Hisense is a member company of ours, and we would have wanted Toho to buy from Hisense, for instance. And that's a massive contract. And we've got various other examples whereby Nestle bought 75 Nissan Bucky's as opposed to a 
um, um, an, uh, a car that's not assembled locally, for instance. So we are, we've got all of these, uh, we've, we, we, we glean on, um, on all of our contacts really to, to, to really support, to support our own. And these are all member companies, member companies of ours. Um, we also, that, this also translates into a portal. Um, uh, we, we are in the process, we've done medical PPEs, general PPEs, furniture, and we're also looking to, to um, we're also looking to expand on our portal, on our portal. So it's, it allows us to segment a membership base by industry and product. So that will allow us to go to a retailer or or to go to to another um, go to another um, industry to say please support please support your own when you do when you do um, when you do procure. So uh, that 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 is also initiatives that we have in place as well as our market access platform, which I'll share more about. And then we also have wonderful. Um, uh, connections with the Franchise Association, for instance, we've got a wonderful relationship with them um, in order to, 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 to enable our members to, to do a Dragon's Den pitch um, to all of the franchises. I mean, that is a massive opportunity and we've had some success in, in terms of our members um, enlisting their products with, with some of the franchises. So that's, that's very exciting. And then we also facilitate the B2B opportunities, which goes hand in hand with the database I mentioned. Um, no doubt that you know the marketing arm of our business is really our strength, and and it's really it's really a part of the business that's been there since the beginning, and it has really grown in leaps and bounds. Um, we have a buy local summit and expo, where whereby uh, this uh, last uh, this year we had the president um, deliver the keynote address. We had buyers uh, um, that were invited to to, uh, albeit it has been a, a hybrid event, and the uh, expo was virtual. Uh, it allowed the buyers to go in and and peruse and and see what's available in terms of locally made goods and services, and then also supply chain workshops. We also have sector and specific forums where we uh, where we have a number of um, success stories and in in poultry, clothing, textile, footwear, and leather, creative industries. We really look at wherever there's a, a an industry facing challenges that we put all the right players in the room, and uh, we talk policy. Uh, we talk about uh, challenges that might that that these companies might be faced. We have government and and the media to really ensure that everybody who gives a, a pledge or a promise that they actually abide by that. And it also gives us a, a sense of uh, and we request companies to make localization commitments, which is really really wonderful. Which is what this is all about. Um, and then we uh, our PR arm of the business is very strong. We you'll see us often in in newspapers and in the media. Um, so we do we talk do talk a lot about local, and in order for us to always be relevant, we do need a strong membership base. So it's very very important that we the membership base is is really synonymous with with um, with with industry and and what's available in the country, etc. In terms of public sector procurement, these are the twenty seven products now that I've mentioned with the local content threshold in the middle, um, and uh, we are tender monitoring function assesses that. And this slide really talks about how we um, how we service um, our members in terms of working with the public sector. So I mentioned the tenant monitoring function. We also do an education drive, um, and we're also lobbying um, with with um, with players to do a very high profile talk about public sector procurement. So we really the advocacy arm and the lobbying arm, but we also have these initiatives and programs in place to make that happen. I'm going to skip the slide. Um, I'm going to hone in on private sector procurement. So I've mentioned, I've given some a sense about um, commitments that we do uh, request from, um, from corporates, from businesses. We also uh, work with retailers to increase their local content levels. And we're also looking at an import replacement project. Um, and we're working very closely with the DTIC's a CEO initiative, which, which looks, I think it's 42 products, which can be um, import replaced. And we're working with the NEDLAC uh, Localization Technical Working Committee to, uh, to see to it that we achieve success in that uh, regard. And then we also have these lobbying sessions with, um, with various association bodies to make sure that they buy local. Uh, we were part of the, the job summit in 2018, uh, where, whereby we were the first entity or organization rather to obtain a localization commitments from corporates, and this work this will work very well. We then partnered SAB um, to really um, adapt their market access platform, whereby we could get corporates to post their tenders, 
um, enlist on the on the market access platform. Um, and in the same breath, we also match these corporates up with the with suppliers, which uh, consist of our proudly South Africans members, which are manufacturers and service providers, so that we have a wonderful procurement tool um, that, that that that's available for for the private sector. So it introduces uh, companies can be rated they, in terms of their services um, that they provide, the the products that they provide, etc. So we it's really a connection tool from big business to 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 um, manufacturers and service providers, enabling also then. The, uh, uh, the the bigger corporates to um, post their tender opportunities for for companies because we're finding that there's no way of this hasn't been yet a very successful procurement tool and we think this could be this could be the winner and we really are focusing a lot of our energy on this it's recently been launched um so so that's very important um that we populated uh, we're in the process of populating it with our members and then also visiting industry to make that happen. Um, this just talks about us getting localization commitments from corporates and um, and ensuring that we, uh, for instance, we to just to give you an idea, we went to um, one of the um, we went to the banking association and we went to the individual banks um, off the back of that initial meeting to ensure that we get a localization commitment from them to buy their furniture locally as well as their uniforms. Um, so we, we 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 scout for those right products. We we then uh, get the right audience through, for instance, the banking association, um, and then also we look at um, getting companies on map so that the procurement can take place. We also have a space on this map tool to, for companies to uh, talk about their localization commitments, so that it can be they can self evaluate and monitor their successes. But all in line with Poppy, we're working very closely with the Competition Commission to make sure we protect all the parties. And that we don't div divulge any secret information in that regard. So this is very, very we quite we quite excited about that. Given that tourism is 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 such a fantastic um, industry to be in, the value chain is enormous, um, and we look forward to this industry flourishing again. And I think the map tool will be really, really helpful in 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 making that possible. This just talks about the portals that I've mentioned. I know time is running out, so I'll go um, over those slides quickly. We'll share the, those slides with you. This is our online shopping platform. So this is another way to reach the consumers. And this is the work that we do in that space. So it gives uh, the online store RSA made. We really do encourage um, service providers and manufacturers to, to list or list on RSA made. Um, we also uh, have different categories. So it really operates like an e-commerce store, like um, one of the competitors with the it ends with a T and then goes a lot. So it's really, it operates very much like that because we get those questions. Does it operate like that company very much so? Um, and then we also have, uh, I mean, prior to COVID, we did a lot of consumer activations in person. So we look forward to the day when we can do these again. Um, um, and uh, these are the, we've done more activations, festival activations, online competitions, which we still continue to do. Um, we've uh, been very innovative looking at the local fashion police uh, that we did uh, um, recently, consumer advertising, sports events, labor mobilization, which continues, consumer expose and university activations. So we really need to try and reach absolutely everybody who's a consumer, even on education on school level, because they do, um, unfortunately, the little, the little ones do dictate what goes into the trolley. So it's important that we also look at those. And then uh, the, uh, the master plans that the DTIC has rolled out has been quite important for us because it gives us some, some insight and access to the industry at large. And uh, Proudly South African has been there to, to secure offtake agreements, yes, but more importantly is to, to, uh, to get the consumers on board. You know, what does it mean to buy local? So we have these e-cards that we work with our partners in distributing these to make sure the consumer knows what is local because often they don't. Um, and you'll notice there we also did one meal many thanks we were we were a stakeholder involved in that project which was very very exciting and and uh, as you can imagine the clothing textile footwear leather sector poultry sector hospitality sector all talks to the the tour tourism industry on some way or other i mean clothing it's unif we're talking uniforms etc so it is quite quite diverse and then we also have um, time-specific um, um, events, uh, time-specific campaigns, rather, festive season, back to school, Black Friday, Valentine's Day, et cetera, and just gives you insight into what we're doing. 
I'm going to play for you now, and, and please forgive me, there was a lot to get through, so I had to really, really motor. Um, but if I may share with you, um, to get to get everybody on board, you, mi you might be a part of a business today, but you're also a consumer. So I really want to, uh, really want to appeal to you to, to really live and breathe the ethos of supporting local. Join the Proudly South African campaign. Um, we, uh, we, uh, we've got a wonderful, um, we've got a wonderful support in Dr. John Carney. Um, he did two of our ads and you would have seen, I'm sure you would have seen our TV ad where we are mobilizing South Africa to, 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 um, to support local, making it a lifestyle choice. And we are quite excited to also launch very soon, um, uh, tomorrow with Thursday, we're going to be launching Living Lacquer Locally, our next phase of this campaign. So I'm going to play for you our ad. Tough is about to begin. We need to change the scoreboard. It's time for all of us to pause and rethink the game plan in order to save the future. I call on all of us to be game changers because greatness isn't reserved only for some people. By buying local, we're choosing to create jobs and sustain the ones we have. Time and time again, South Africans have taken destiny into their own hands. Creating products that the rest of the world wanted to buy. See, the world remembers about us what we sometimes forget. But it's time for change. Let's all buy local. It's game time, Zanzi. Local is like <laughs> Everyday decisions shape our future. Thank you so much. That is my presentation. And if you'd like to contact us or join the campaign, please do so by email. The address is info at proudlysa.co.za. And we'll be happy to, to help you there. And we also we have a website, www.proudlysa.co.za. Thank you very much, Happy. Thank you so, so much, uh, Janine. Uh, much, much appreciated. And, um, and I see you asking, you know, if, if, if somebody would like to join the campaign. There were, there's already some, while you were talking, uh, that's how captive your, your presentation was. Somebody has already asked us, how do I join? And, uh, and we've given the, the details as well. So thank you so much. And I'm hoping that with what you've shared gives uh, our audience uh, a better understanding and appreciation of what what you know why we were formed in the first place by the way we celebrate 20 years this year um and and, and what our mandate seeks to achieve i see even on the chat box somebody also asked um you know who owns proudly south african i think that was the that was the question and uh, and we've answered and gave them context that we are an NP um, a, a, a non-profit organization and uh, formed uh, by Nedlik uh, by Madiba Rana, right uh, 20 years ago and uh, we are represented by four constituencies uh, in on in Nedlik. So thank you so much, Janine. I am hoping that there will be questions for you. Um, and uh, I will bring you back on just to discuss some of the things. I, in fact, I encourage uh, our, our guests to please, uh, you know, talk to us uh, more about Proudly South African. Thank you, Janine. Okay, thank you so much. All righty. Um, so, so with that said, that was Janine Franz Stratton, and she is the uh, uh, executive manager who takes care of uh, strategy, stakeholder relations and legal at Proudly South African, um, you know, who, who really uh, is a magician behind, behind the scenes. Thank you so, so much, Janine. Uh, so just to remind everybody who's online to please, uh, you know, send us questions, talk to us and, uh, and see, uh, you know, how we can um, assist you. Uh, should there be any need in that uh, in that area, uh, may I please now invite Pagamile Shazo, who is the chair of uh, SATSA uh, Board Committee on Access, Inclusivity, and Diversity, um, uh, and a uh, founder of uh, Zulu Nomad. Uh, Pagamile, thank you so much uh, and welcome. I see your presentation is on screen. You're most welcome to. Uh, 
go ahead and, and, and go through your presentation. Good morning, Happy. Good morning, colleagues. Thank you so much for inviting us to be on this esteemed panel this morning. What an exciting presentation by Janine. And it's just thrilling to be able to speak about the work that we're doing as SATSA and more specifically SATSA's Access, Inclusivity and Diversity Committee in terms of localization in the tourism sector. I think if there's been one learning um, from the COVID-19 pandemic within the tourism sector is really just um, the risk of our reliance on the international uh, market as far as tourism is concerned. And so um, there is this huge opportunity for job creation, for, and for youth employment in the sector as we rebuild, as we rebuild more sustainably. So I'm excited to be here this morning. I'm contributing to our discussion on building a transformed, resilient and sustainable tourism sector through localization. Happy, please can I just ask you to confirm you see my screen and all is good? Yes, we can. Thank you so much, Paramile. Thank you. So to begin, I just wanted to, to go into what it is that we're speaking about when we speak about access, inclusivity and diversity within SATSA. Overall, the purpose is for the facilitation of the transformation of the, of the South African tourism inbound industry um, to include a wider diversity of tourism product. I think we're all aware of the very traditional um, safari product that has been positioned as the, the primary African tourism product for, for consumers. From an access point of view, we believe that sustainable transformation can only become evident in such as membership when grassroots, township, rural, and undiscovered urban tourism businesses are given access to information and resources needed to develop their businesses to operate in the main value chain. From an inclusivity point of view, we believe that in order to create space for grassroots uh, businesses in Satsa, we ought, we ought to meet these businesses where they are and assist them to build up. We believe in lending a helping hand and walking the journey with grassroots businesses in partnership with public stakeholders and established businesses. From a diversity point of view, SATSA stands for the inclusion of all sexes, races, cultures, geographical locations, inbound tourism businesses into its membership and represented in the board. To quickly touch on some of the activities that we've been up to as SATSA's Access, Inclusivity and Diversity Committee um, really since the pandemic hit us in early 2020 and over the last few months leading up to now, we have three areas of focus, market access, skills development and knowledge sharing, as well as then equity funding opportunities for SMMEs and young people. From a market access point of view, uh, we have hosted eight virtual FAMs, which are familiarization trips um, in Limpopo, Eastern Cape, Northern Cape, and Guazulu Natal. And this has provided market exposure to over a thousand local and international buyers for 136 small tourism products based in the townships, rural areas, and small towns of South Africa. Um, a, a really huge achievement in our view during the pandemic period. From a skills development and knowledge sharing point of view, uh, we have hosted training workshops for over 160 uh, tourism businesses and stakeholders in the Northern Cape with Northern Cape Tourism. Um, we have had the, the privilege to contribute 48 mentors into um, the TBCSA and National Department of Tourism pilot mentorship program, which is currently ongoing. And that for me was just a testament to the willingness of established tourism businesses to come on board and hold hands with up and coming entrepreneurs who are looking to enter the sector or who are, who are in the sector already, but just need that little bit of support in order to have their businesses be sustainable as well. When we made out the call to Satsa members deep in the throngs of the impact of, of COVID-19 in their own businesses, we had um, Satsa members 
with over a thousand years of experience offer their services to become mentors for free um, to young people in this sector. And that is just a huge achievement. And again, a testament to the willingness of the sector to transform and the willingness of the sector to contribute towards transformation, whatever it is um, that that looks like from a practical point of view. We've also done some work um, with the Motherwell Tourism Association in the Eastern Cape. Um, this is a proof of concept because we, we as the Satsa Aid Committee are represented throughout the country. Um, there is a Satsa Aider in each chapter of Satsa in the country. And each chapter is then encouraged to go out and encourage grassroots tourism and support grassroots um, tourism associations, whatever that looks like in each uh, province, because each province is unique and each tourism association does have unique needs. And so we're using the opportunity in Motherwell um, to work with the township community there and the tourism associate and set up a formalized tourism association that would be able to benefit from Satsa's um, vast network and expertise. We also then rolled out our Ignite Your Passion campaign where we encouraged grade 11 tourism students in Motherwell and Nisna um, to hold on, to keep the faith, um, to understand that even though the sector is going through a terribly difficult time at the moment, there is definitely opportunity still for young people in the sector and they must not lose faith. Instead, though, they need to focus on, on opportunities for entrepreneurship as they come into the sector as young innovators for the tourism sector of the future. Um, from an equity funding point of view, we were terribly excited at the beginning of, of the year with the launch of the Tourism Equity Fund because this was for us an opportunity to do another proof of concept which we saw as a blueprint for sustainable ownership change in South Africa's tourism. Again, we have identified that several gaps exist between business owners who are looking to exit their businesses and young people um, or young professionals who've been employed in some shape or form in the tourism sector who are ready to take the leap and, and go into business themselves and just don't have that, that equity to get them into these opportunities. Um, and fortunately, we're all aware that the Tourism Equity Fund has not continued. However, from the Satsa community, within the Satsa community, we are very proud and we know um, of several business owners who've come forward wanting to be part of a sustained ownership change program where they would be connected with a young person or a group of young people, previously disadvantaged individuals, of course, who would then come in and in a sustainable manner be able to be eased into um, the business and take over the business from them. In terms of Let's Innovate Tourism, we have three mission goals. Um, the first is to get South Africa's established tourism and hospitality businesses visible and generating revenue online. The second is to empower South Africa's micro and small businesses in tourism and hospitality with the digital and technology tools that their businesses require to thrive in the digital economy and to create more jobs. And the third is to encourage young people aspiring to be employed in tourism and hospitality to rather level up and create an army of entrepreneurs leveraging their heritage and developing much needed new tourism product for both South Africa's domestic market as well as international travelers when they return. And we aim to achieve this through our 12 month program, which launched this September, uh, where we will be running weekly podcasts, a podcast reaching a minimum of 1,300 businesses in tourism in South Africa, as well as monthly engagements, including webinars. Uh, the monthly webinars are, are targeted at um, creating awareness on the role of innovation, entrepreneurship and technology as South Africa's sec tourism sector rebuilds. We also will be having monthly mapathon events where we uh, in each province will be mapping along with young people. This involves tertiary students um, in technology studies and as well as tourism and heritage studies to come together and learn about agile methodology and how their skills can be applied in the tourism sector of the future. 
from a workshops and training point of view, we'll be working with technology company collaborators to workshop and train um, targeted tourism and hospitality SMMEs in South Africa as well. And then obviously we have several media partners whom we'll be working with to amplify the, the work and the results um, that we expect to see. Uh, in terms of our outcomes and expected results, we're looking to create a tourism and hospitality sector in South Africa that is empowered with digital and technology tools, processes and systems that will help them grow sustainable businesses and create jobs. A tourism and hospitality sector which is globally competitive, we're looking to create new jobs and this is very, very exciting for me as a young South African understanding the state of unemployment and youth unemployment specifically in this country. We have an opportunity in the sector to create jobs for software engineers, for data scientists, for copywriters, for designers. You know, we have new roles to be created in SMMEs, uh, for example, digital marketing roles. Uh, we have an opportunity to create new SMMEs altogether, um, who will be creating new tourism product that currently does not exist, that is targeted at the tourism consumer of the future, right? And we'll also be training um, young people on digital skills and tools in order to help them thrive in the digital economy. In terms of the mapathons specifically that I've referred to, um, we aim to have an empowered cohort of technology skilled young people with an in-depth knowledge of how their skills can be applied in South Africa's tourism tech and digital solutions. We aim to have 225 students trained within the year on agile methodology, as I've mentioned. We aim to then have a live website with interactive maps of key attractions in each province with additional information on the UNESCO World Heritage Sites and community-based tourism products near and around the sites. Uh, we will be mapping 90 women-owned businesses and community-based tourism products in the process as well. How do you get involved? We invite absolutely everybody on the call this morning to get involved for provincial and local tourism bodies. Um, we're obviously looking to have as much awareness within grassroots SMMEs. So you have databases of tourism and hospitality um, SMMEs that have been on trainings before that have applied for funding. Let's get together those databases and make sure that young people are able to receive all of this information shared via the podcasts and the webinars and the training platforms, etc. For digital technology partners, we are looking for collaborators who will come on board and share with tourism business owners at a grassroots level on how their tools, how their software, how their solutions um, applies to their businesses as we rebuild better. And then for all tourism stakeholders in South Africa, really there's an opportunity for us to partner and collaborate for localized digitization initiatives in each province, in local towns, um, as well as municipalities. So please do email myself, Paka at Zulu Nomad. Um, you can get more information around Satsa Aid on the Satsa website. We also have a Satsa Aid community Facebook page where you'll be seeing a lot of the activities around um, the work that we do in access, inclusivity, and diversity in tourism. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Paga, uh, for that um, well uh, put together uh, presentation that you've shared with us, really, really insightful. Thank you so, so much. Um, and I see, may I have you back on screen, please, uh, Paga? Just to say that I see that there's a lot of programs that, that you uh, took us through that are, you know, that are meant to assist young people in the industry, uh, given the challenges that we all know of and, and, and all of that. And I know that you did share your contact details as well, but it's great to see that Satsa has um, actively come up with uh, ways to provide solutions. Hey, I think we've, we, we're over talking about what needs to happen and how we're going to, do, what are we going to do about it now? Absolutely. Is that what drives you at Satsa? Absolutely happy. I think, 
you know, we're, we're so grateful to SATSA as an organization for giving us this platform as young people to actually drive these initiatives and drive these programs ourselves because we've traveled this country as young people, as young business owners, because we've traveled this country with domestic travelers, the primary um, consumers of our products as small business owners in the tourism industry, as black business owners, is actually domestic travelers. And so we understand the opportunity in this sector and we want for there to be able for room for as many young people who are who really do have an opportunity in this sector to be given you know to be empowered with empowered with those skills with the opportunities with the information that they need to thrive as we rebuild it's a very very exciting time for us we come from a difficult time but we're excited about the future and what the future holds for us fantastic we do have three requests online uh, where the attendees are asking if we could, if I could please ask you very nicely, if you would allow us to share your presentation with them afterwards, would that be okay? Fantastic. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Great stuff. So, so, so the team will engage you after this so we can have access to your uh, presentation so we can share it uh, with, uh, with, with our audience this, uh, this, this morning. Thank you so much, Paga. If you're still um, hanging around with us, I will, I will chat to you again uh, shortly after the, 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 the speakers that, 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 that are going to present now. And uh, thank you. Great stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Right. Thank you so much, Paga. All righty. So that was uh, Paga Mile. Uh, who is representing Statsa and Pagamile is the Pagamile Sazo is uh, is the chair of uh, Satsa Board Committee on Access, Inclusivity and Diversity. And you know it goes without saying that her presentation focused exactly on that. There's quite a few examples uh, and programs that she shared with us that are very accessible, that are that are inclusive and very diverse. Uh, for young people in the tourism space. Thank you so much. Keep those uh, uh, comments and questions coming in. And, and yes, for those of you who've asked, if you could please have access to the presentations with the greatest of pleasure, by all means, we will make it happen. And uh, next in line, uh, you know, from our uh, panel of uh, expect speakers, speakers is uh, Wendy um, Alves who is CEO Restaurants Association of South Africa. Uh, may I, hi, Wendy, uh, welcome uh, to this uh, building a transformed, resilient and sustainable tourism se sector through localization. Um, is Wendy online? Okay, yeah, there we go. Hey, Wendy. We go. How are you? Hey, well, thanks. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting us today. Of course. Wendy, I feel like we need to give you an access card at Proudly South African because every month or every second month you are with us, you know, talking to us, trying to make a difference, uh, you know, the best way you can. <laughs> I love South Africa. I love the people. I love our restaurants. I love the landscape. I even started hiking. So I'm an avid hiker and I'm exploring all the highest peaks in South Africa, nine peaks. And I'm going to journey and tell everybody around South Africa how amazing tourism and tourism destination is. So that's oh. on my page. So it comes in quite nicely professionally. Oh, fantastic. We can't wait to hear about that. And I see you are nicely branded today. You're not messing around, Wendy. You're representing the quite well. <laughs> uh, welcome, Wendy. Please go ahead. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Thanks. I always say to the youth in South Africa, there's no better place to be anywhere in the world right now than in South Africa. You know, we are part of such exciting times, such diverse times, such passionate, energetic times. And I think the part for me that makes South Africa so beautiful is that we have the most incredible people on the continent, on the planet, in the universe. There are not better people than what you're ever going to find in South Africa and most importantly in the hospitality sector. And I think this is key to why I'm so passionate about the work that I do and being in restaurants because it is just simply about the amazing connections that we make all around the South Africa belt and on all the iconic parts where some of the best restaurants around the world are rested. So when we look at why is restaurants such an intrinsic part of tourism, 
I always say it should actually be about food tourism. It shouldn't really only just be about tourism and restaurants. You know, the role of the culinary experience in tourism plays such an integral part. It's probably the biggest part of choosing a destination. And more often than not, the restaurants that you choose to visit are part of destination tourism to invite you to really enjoy the accolades of many restaurants. And it's not simply about fine dining. It is also simply about experiential restaurants, township dining, uh, cafe dining, experiential dining, dorpy dining, as we call it, and many other um, areas where people look at becoming an affinity with restaurants to be able to go through some of the top restaurants around South Africa. So we actually have people that travel from place to place to go and enjoy culinary excellence. And we look at it, why is it such a big part? You know, one, we look at the opportunity for people to travel around the country to explore places. And not only within the places, there's obviously exciting areas to go to or adventure parks or hiking trails or mountains or um, iconic museums, etc. The biggest element why people go there is definitely to enjoy the culinary experiences. We find across South Africa and our parts we've got these wonderful to explore what those towns have got and if we look at the western cape in particular it's rich with with heritage diversity creativity and the opportunity for people really to come in and enjoy premier food in the most wonderful sophisticated friendly environments the landscapes that some of our restaurants are sited on you can't find anywhere else in the world you know if you look at those beautiful cave restaurants in amanas we look at the busy creative nightlife belt of Vilakazi Street. We look at Maboneng. I mean, Maboneng is so close to my heart. I absolutely love it. We look at other areas like Parkhurst and Woodstock and various other beautiful, densely populated areas where there are restaurant belts that offer variety of wonderful experiences. And that really are top notch, not only top notch from the decor, or the design, but the actual offering in terms of what their speciality is, speciality dishes, combining chefs with experiences, but most importantly, I think it's a cultural component that goes in with the various people that work in these different areas, whether you're in the hustle and bustle of Joburg, or you're in the Platteland, or you're in a Dorpi, or you're down in the Western Cape, or you're on the waterfront where there's sophisticated travelers. We engage with a beautiful variety of people who are the restaurants of South Africa. They are every experience. And they are so much a part of tourism. I think also the forgotten part of talent, because that is engagement that you get to the rest of South Africa. That is the point of destination. That is your tour guide. That is your tour book. That is your atlas. That is your map. And so often, where we're training people within the restaurant space, we neglect to actually train them on tourism and what happens with local tourism. So as we move through COVID, we've certainly seen that the local tourism has definitely been decimated. The restrictions on interprovincial travel showed how imperative it was for us to bring local tourism to places like Harabiesport Dam, Parais, Ribux Castile, uh, places up in the west coast, your Paternoster, your Witbaai, etc. We look at other places on the KZN coast, your south coast, Mams and Toti, all these beautiful little areas where these really quaint and wonderful little outlets simply didn't have the foot traffic or the numbers to sustain themselves. And that has sadly been lost. And those restaurants really need to form such an integral part of the redevelopment of local tourism. And I'm hoping that the new Minister of Tourism will find me as exciting as when I found the rebuilding of the tourism sector with inclusion of all these beautiful restaurants that we can reopen and invite people back to those beautiful iconic places and bring people back to life, bring their businesses back to life, bring people back to work, to their jobs, to feel proud to be South Africa, to have a sense of purpose and dignity and to be able to contribute to society and to go home feeling proud of the work you do with the integration of actually serving people because that's authentically who we are. We've got some of the best food quality around the world. We grow local and I love, you know, we are local as lacquer because we're all about that. In many of our Dorp areas, it really is a complete and utter sustainable opportunity. We get a lot of the products grown from people in the community. We get bread made from the local people. Our little 
artists make their paintings and they put all the uh, brick and brack in the, the restaurants. And if we look at the damage that COVID has done by the restrictions on interprovincial travel, the extension on the whole value chain has collapsed. And if we look at a town like Franschhoek, I think it speaks volumes of what is truly destination tourism for food tourism in South Africa. A variety of restaurants, sophisticated chefs, beautiful art galleries, a combination of experiences, wine tasting, wine farms, the components of gin tasting, innovation, creativity, experience, beautiful people, and every single restaurant unique, even though it's a densely populated area with a ton of restaurants in it. So we need to really look at ways of how we remodel the South African tourism structure to be able to constantly incorporate restaurants. I always say we often far more reminded of where we eat than where we sleep. You know, beds are comfortable places as long as sheets are clean and uh, there is a um, safe place for us to rest our heads. But we always remember where we eat. Doesn't matter where in the world we travel, eating is intrinsic of the delivery of the cultural experience of every place that we go to. I'd also like to just thank South Africa for loving the industry. We are definitely South Africa's most loved industry. You know, we're a place where people get together, where you can get together for your morning coffee, your freshly brewed coffee, or you can get your toasted sandwich or your croissant or your breakfast. We certainly are the office space meeting. We've seen through COVID, we've become the boardrooms of many businesses. We've become the meeting rooms of many businesses. And we've even get, become the independent office of many businesses. We are your every occasion, your birthday celebration, your weddings, your ceremonies, your celebrations, your joys, every single occasion that deems to be put into a momentous occasion as all part of who we are as restauranteurs. And I think we bring life together. We bring life together in a cultural way where we certainly can live in unity. We look at the World Cup. We come together in restaurants. We come together with big screens and we get goosebumps because we are authentic in wearing our proudly South African gear. And we are completely in a space of complete and utter camaraderie. It doesn't matter who our neighbors are sitting next to us at tables. We forget about what destinations we come from. We simply are bound in, in unity and we create these moments that long live within the memories of us. And if you go back into your mind and you unpack some of the best moments you had, They've always been in restaurants where it's been busy, energetic, music, the celebration of people, the beautiful people of South Africa, the staff that have contributed to it and the occasion that you've celebrated. South Africa for me, in, in particular in the restaurant industry, represents everything that's colorful. When I look at our beautiful South Africa flag, it speaks to me of every level of culinary excellence and experience that we have. And I'm very excited for the future, the transformation, the diversity, the opportunity to become evolved and look at new ways of being innovative, our food trucks, our food stalls, our roadside food, our township cuisine, our cutting destination, the rebuilding of our fine dining, our wine tourism, and all those beautiful restaurants, picnic spots, public parks to bring people to spaces where they can safely enjoy meals, our events, our um, Outdoor events, our places like Casalinga that has all these wonderful shows and, you know, tapenade on tap and um, pinotage on tap and all these beautiful experiences that we give to South Africa. I'm proud to represent the restaurant industry in South Africa. I look forward to working with the youth. I look forward to building the youth. I look forward to inspiring the youth and reminding them that when it's a choice of career that you take to move into, it's not just a job. It is a lifestyle. It is a love. It is what you wake up to every single day. It's what you go to sleep to every day. It is a seven day, 365 day that you grow to love, that you're passionate and that you deliver on every possible experience on. And I'm looking forward to creating more holiday destinations with more culinary experiences that we can rebuild our country to be phenomenal and that we are a sought after iconic destination by all places around the world to come to South Africa and enjoy who we are. Ubuntu for me, I'm proud to be South Africa. I honor my diva. And I hope as we move through the next phases of COVID, we will always stand in unity together and be reminded that food is the cornerstone of where life begins, breaking bread together today and always. I cheers and salute everyone in South Africa who works in our industry. Thank you.
Uh, thank you, Wendy. Thank you so much. Sorry, I was a little technologically challenged, uh, but thank you so much. And um, let me tell you that you're such a great storyteller, um, you know, very captive. Uh, thank you so, so much. And, and you know, you kept it simple. The, 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 that's the long and short of it, right? Uh, that it's going to take all of us to try and make the difference that we would like to see. Wendy, do you not feel that over the past weekend, uh, which was Heritage Weekend, that South Africans were out there uh, celebrating, you know, their local, everything local that the country has to offer. We were out in restaurants. You made reference to, you know, the likes of Villagazi Street, Maboneng. Uh, you know, the, the country was busy, right, from a domestic a travel perspective, but also we just really honestly went out there. We're in restaurants, we were hanging out, uh, you know, taking obviously, you know, necessary precautions, but 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 uh, but uh, it was great to see, don't you think? I have to say that, you know, for me, it was so absolutely beautiful and riveting to see South Africa come alive. The roads were busy, the restaurants yes. were busy, the yes. accommodations were busy, people were out and about looking for experiences. They were out in the Dorpies, Dahlstrom, Clarence, Parais, the yes. Free State. And people certainly were, were in awe of being able to experience South Africa. And in some which way, it's beautiful that people haven't been able to just so easily travel overseas because we've been able to rebuild our economy. Yes. And I think a weekend and a long weekend, especially Heritage Weekend, that is so iconic to us in South Africa, tells the tallest story of why it's so imperative for South Africans to invest in local. Yeah. Because if we continue to put back into our country, we can rebuild so much so quickly and we can bring businesses back to life and beautiful people back to their jobs. Absolutely. And I think this weekend spoke the truth of where yeah. we can move to as a country. I was very proud to be out. I love being out. I went to a place which I'd never been to before called Klokalan, um, in the Free State. Yes. And there were two beautiful farm stores. The one was called The Cabin. And the other place was um, a place called Constantia. Mm -hmm. And they were both intrinsic of the cherry history and the cherry farm history. Oh. But I was absolutely mind blown by the experience and the creativity and the beautiful people. They were so excited to come back to work. Yeah. And I learned so much about the heritage of that little town through the beautiful people who served the meals and to engage with them to tell me all about what else was happening in destination tourism. So Klokolan is definitely a place I'd recommend to people to travel to, friendly and beautiful people all around that town. Oh, fantastic. Listen, Wendy, there's so much to see. We have so much to see. So I've never heard of that place before. I will Google it. I will find it and I'll try to visit. And because it's about that. It's really about experiencing our own. Um, and it's still affordable to be able to travel locally, uh, you know, from a domestic point of view. You don't have to have loads and loads of money. Don't let anybody fool you. It's accessible. It's affordable. It's uh, You can drive around and really, you know, get to enjoy but last weekend also demonstrated to us that we can all play a part. Absolutely. You know, you know, we can all play a part. The restaurant you went to, uh, whether it's a Chisanyama, whether it's the farm you went to, you know, just by being there and contributing to the uh, to keeping that business afloat, like you say, you were you saw people being happy to be back at work. That's what we want. We mm -hmm. just want to work. Uh, you know, you yeah. know what I love? I love that people become, that they share, you know, that we certainly have um, highlighted those beautiful destinations who do want to rebuild their businesses, who make it affordable for South Africans. You know, yes. we still got this massive top end who are reliant on international tourism, which certainly is not coming in. Yeah. And we see that many people are sharing on social media, which is so lovely because yeah. it is by repeat business that we are able to find these little nuances and these these hidden gems all around South Africa, yeah. you know, and experience new ways of, of filling our lives with purpose. You know, I went up to Mafadi, which is the highest peak in South Africa. It's a, a five-day hike that we took to the hills. I never knew that there was a place like that in South Africa. I never knew about Intersuti. And, and the more we start sharing and collaborating and talking about mm -hmm. what beautiful places are there, the more we can visit these places and find weekend treasures to hop in a car an hour or two away and go for a lovely meal or an overnight stay that is affordable. That's yeah. as affordable as, as what it is to go camping or to go glamping or to 
go to a farmhouse. And I think it's so important that we all just continue to share the moments that we have in these beautiful restaurants and any iconic destinations we travel to. Wendy, you and I have just confirmed that local is lekker, uh, which is a lot you did throw. It is lekker, and we are here to demonstrate just how lekker local is. In fact, when I do my putting shots later on, I'm going to share with you, with the audience, a new campaign that we're launching on Thursday called Living Lekker Locally. You've just told us about it, how to live lekker locally, you know. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much, Wendy. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. All righty. Thank you so much, everybody. And now um, we look forward to, uh, oh, and that, that was Wendy Albert, sorry, sleeping on the job a little bit. Wendy Albert is CEO uh, for Restaurant Association of South Africa, uh, a great, great friend of the campaign. Um, I forgot to say to you, Wendy, that those accolades behind you tell a story of how an incredible hard worker you are uh, for the industry. Thank you so, so much. And now I'd like to invite onto the podium, uh, Mr. Ntlantlan Kumalo Umdungwa Umbulaz, Umziligaz Gamashobani. Ntlantlan Kumalo, he is smiling. I have got brownie points from Ntlantlan Kumalo. <laughs> Uh, thanks, thanks. For that Pete. beautiful, uh, uh, you know, welcome. Ntlantla is General Manager of Tourism Development uh, in KwaZulu Natal. Salbona Mdu. Salbona, Salbona. Good morning to to yourself, um, my fellow uh, panelists, as well as uh, all the participants uh, in this session. Uh, I'm Ntlantla Kumalo uh, from Tourism KwaZulu Natal. Uh, I'm responsible for tourism development. Um, I, I will be addressing two questions that have been I've been requested to talk about. The first question deals with um, how tourism KwaZulu Natal implements the increase in, on tourism spend, and the second question is about uh, what are we doing as the province in order to ensure that. Uh, the tourism sector is transformed. But before I can address those two questions, I think it's necessary to provide a, a scenario uh, that will paint a picture of the current situation that is prevailing as a result of the pandemic. I think we are all aware, and it is a fact, that uh, with uh, the travel restrictions that have been introduced um, uh, within the country and uh, uh, been introduced by other governments, um, in, in other countries as well, they have caused a severe, severe impact on the tourism industry. We, 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 we have seen uh, the, the tourism businesses uh, not being fully operational. Uh, as a result of that, uh, we have uh, uh, experienced uh, some loss in terms of income. Businesses have experienced uh, some losses in terms of income. And uh, there has been some uh, uh, decline in terms of employment opportunities. Um, uh, some of the businesses have laid off uh, some, um, some workers uh, simply because they were not fully operational. And, 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 and again, they, they, they never generated a sufficient revenue. And uh, to an extent that even the contribution that the tourism sector is making uh, towards the GDP has also declined generally. So that is the context within which uh, we, we, we are working as, as the tourism industry. Um, uh, KZN is not an exception. We are experiencing the same problems. Uh, most of our businesses have not been generating revenue. Now, the challenge is therefore, how do we ensure that uh, we keep these businesses afloat? And how do we ensure that uh, we increase the tourism spend uh, in the province? Uh, the issue of the tourism spend in the province uh, hinges um, uh, on two aspects. The first aspect is the visitor arrivals. And the second aspect is the length of stay. Uh, the increase in visitor arrivals in the province will definitely ensure that there is an increase in tourism spend. Similarly, the longer visitors stay in the province, 
it means they will spend more money within the province. So those are the two uh, aspects that hinges on 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 the increase in 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 in, in, in tourism spent within the province. Now um, that has 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 necessitated us as the destination management organization to look into our marketing efforts as well as our tourism offerings. We, we have an advantage of the fact that uh, we've got uh, very, very diverse uh, tourism experiences that are offered by the province. They range from uh, beach experience, wildlife experience, uh, cultural experience, adventure. Uh, we also do have uh, 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 business tourism that we, we need to, to provide. Uh, we still do have facilities to accommodate uh, large events and, and conferences within the provinces. So basically, we do have an advantage when it comes to the variety of tourism offerings that we have. Uh, and the second part is that uh, we needed to up our, our, our game in terms of um, uh, marketing the destination um, so that we can, we can see the, the increase in visitor arrivals we can also see the increase in terms of, uh, of tourism spent. We have been ever since the emergence of the, of the pandemic and the associated restrictions, we have been deeply uh, involved in running out the, 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 the campaigns, the marketing campaigns. These campaigns that we have run throughout the year were meant solely to ensure that um, our, our source market are not getting lost. And they do not forget about us as a beautiful and interesting destination case at the end. So we have uh, run the, the awareness campaign just to ensure that uh, our, our markets um, um, uh, uh, are well informed and uh, they are updated in terms of the developments. We continuously share information with our markets in relation to our offerings. Uh, using different uh, uh, platforms, mainly the digital platforms. We have also ran the visual tours uh, in partnership with SATSA. Uh, there were familiarization tours that we have uh, run throughout the province. We have also been involved in tourism activation uh, uh, programs. Uh, a number of product owners within the province have been uh, supported in terms of uh, showcasing uh, their, their product offerings. So that's the program that has been running throughout the year and it continues to, to run. We still continue with the same activities. We have been busy with the same, uh, trying to promote the, 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 the destination. Uh, we are running the activities associated with uh, the tourism month. We are all over the province. Uh, trying to showcase and activate uh, some tourism businesses within the, the destination. And uh, we had also ran workshops with, uh, with, uh, with uh, the trade, our tourism um, um, uh, businesses, uh, in order to build confidence to our visitors that the destination KZN is safe. Uh, they have been orientated in terms of uh, and trained in terms of um, uh, the use of the of the industry protocols. I can safely say that uh, all businesses within the province are adhering to the to the uh, tourism industry protocols for COVID nineteen. In that way, we are trying to ensure that um, uh, uh, our visitors still do have confidence. Uh, to our destination and the fact that our destination remains safe. We, we, we have also uh, 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 been engaging with, with trade uh, to showcase all the offerings that uh, the, the destination is offering uh, using the digital platforms. We have been encouraging uh, also forward bookings uh, amongst the, the travelers and the tour operators that we work with um uh, those are the activities 
the intense uh, campaigns, uh, the intense marketing efforts and the promotional efforts that we have been running as a destination uh, since the advent of, uh, of, uh, of the COVID-19 until to date, we are still doing the same. Uh, we are busy again with uh, the summer campaigns um uh, we go throughout the, the the our main focus is on the domestic tourism uh, we are visible in in the number of provinces uh trying to invite an, a, 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 a visitors to come to 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 our shores uh, we also run the the enterprise development uh, uh, program as our contribution towards transformation. This enterprise development program is in fact um, prioritizing the small tourism uh, enterprises, mostly those who are owned by the previous disadvantaged individuals. Uh, we have been offering a variety of interventions uh, for small tourism uh, enterprises. One intervention that we are facilitating is the market access. We try to identify the different uh, access markets in which the small tourism enterprises will be able to showcase their products so that they can uh, attract uh, 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 the markets. Uh, recently, as a result of the pandemic, we have been using in the main the digital uh, 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 access markets. Uh, online, uh, we have been participating, supporting the, our small tourism enterprises to participate as well. We also, as part of the interventions that we have, we've got uh, the capacity building uh, program. Uh, we have been working hard in order to support the small tourism uh, businesses to to, with a program called Digital Transformation. We have been implementing this program effective from the beginning of the financial year. Uh, we shall continue up until the end of this financial year. We are assisting these uh, tourism enterprises with digital tools that they can use to operate their businesses. In terms of bookings, in terms of bookings and reservations, uh, also in terms of uh, building their websites uh, so that uh, their websites are agile. We are also assisting them in terms of packaging their products in a digital manner so that they are easily presentable in various digital uh, 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 platforms that are out there. So there are a variety of tools that uh, the, the small enterprises have been assisted with currently. And uh, further to that, they are being trained on the digital skills so that they can be able to apply all of these uh, 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 technological tools uh, to operate their businesses and to market their products. So we do have a, a digital transformation program in place. We, we have been also um, uh, running a, a, a provincial tourism relief fund um uh with effect from with effect from march uh, uh, this year the first intake um was uh, between march and april and uh, we have concluded the first intake we are opening up again um the second intake of 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 the tourism relief fund in the province so we are um, uh, receiving applications. We started um, the process uh, on the 27th, which is yesterday for the second intake. We are trying to support the, those small businesses who have been hit hard uh, by the, the, the lockdown restrictions in order to get some, some form of relief in terms of funds that uh, the provincial government has set aside for them. So we've got uh, a 20 million uh, tourism relief fund that uh, we are working on in support of the small tourism uh, enterprises in the, in, the, in the province. As part of the enterprise development program, again, we run the mentorship and coaching program uh, 
for the emerging uh, tourism uh, enterprises. So we link the emerging ones with the experienced uh, tourism businesses uh, so that they will be able to guide them throughout the process of doing business um, uh, and in cases where they had to experience challenges the the mentors and the coach are available to assist the small enterprise uh, 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 tourism businesses within the province so these are the interventions that we have in place in terms of transformation and also in terms of trying to ensure that under the circumstances we do increase our 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 tourism spend as the destination and as the provinces thank you Let me back there, Happy. Thank you so much, uh, and Mr. Kumalo. Thank you so much. Uh, your presentation is well received uh, with, uh, with loads and loads of uh, opportunities that you've highlighted uh, in your presentation. What caught my attention uh, over and above everything else, obviously, is the access to market opportunities that you mentioned uh, that you took us through in your in your presentation, because I, I would imagine that you agree with me, uh, Mduma, that, uh, you know, it's one thing for somebody to have a great business in the context of the industry we are talking about, whether it's a, you know, a boutique hotel, a lodge or a restaurant, if they do not have access to market, they will shut down, right? It defeats the peoples if nobody supports them. Yes, in, in fact, in fact, you, you are right. That's one of the challenges that we had identified, that uh, efforts are being made to capacitate this, to establish and capacitate uh, 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 tourism businesses. But the reason why they do not grow and, and the reason why they are not viable is because they do not have access to market. So that is a support that we are providing uh, we have been helping them to 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 present their products and their businesses in different um, uh, market access platform. Uh, those market access platform that makes available uh, many um, uh, tourism trade, uh, so that they will be able to form some business linkages. We do those market access platforms that are within the country and we also do those that uh, um, are international in nature. So that's an access that we support them to, to participate in. So it does bring some, 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 some relief because they are able to form some linkages with uh, other like-minded businesses from outside the country and uh, they, they are able to form some deals mm -hmm. so that they can have some fair share of the market as well. Mm -hmm. uh, to sustain their businesses. Mm -hmm. and, and talk about that. Um, there's, a, there's, a, uh, uh, there's, a quick, there's a question online that speaks directly to that. Uh, and, and, and what the, 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 uh, the delegate would like to know is that they say, um, you know, they're based in Johannesburg. Are your programs a, a, a KZN specific or, um, you know, can, can you support any other business that is outside the KZN province? Are these opportunities, are they, are they open, you know, to every business in the country? Yes, in fact, uh, we, we, the, the opportunities are limited to those tourism businesses that are operating from and within the province because uh, our jurisdiction is limited to um, KZN province. Okay. So... Uh, that's that's the reason why it is meant all these opportunities that I've spoken about are meant solely for businesses that are within the province. Okay. All right. Uh, great stuff. And, and just a quick one, uh, which I think is important for you to take on. Now, how is wildlife incorporated into tourism? Would this be your jurisdiction and mandate? Uh, even though it's not our jurisdiction as tourism case at N, but okay. it is a tourism resource that is available in the province. Uh, it is, uh, wildlife is managed by SMVL or KZN Wildlife. However, yeah. the tourism facilities and the resources that are, are within the reserve, 
uh, are further promoted by us as part of the, des the destination promotion as TKZN. So they are accessible for tourism purposes. We've got uh, a lot of facilities in the nature reserve that we have. We also have got big five in this province, uh, so um, people are at liberty to, 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 to travel around within the province, uh, visit a variety of nature reserves, and see a variety of species, uh, wildlife species that is housed within those particular reserves. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kumalo. We're very well received, and thank you so, so much for your contribution. Uh, we hope you're still with us online for further discussion uh, after our two speakers coming up, but we really, really appreciate your contribution. Thank you. Uh, Debo Homusweu, who's online, you, there you have it. Uh, Mr. Kumal has answered that these programs he was talking about are specifically for the KZN region. But having said that, I would imagine that, the, you know, if you think back to uh, Pagamile's presentation from Satsa, the were, her presentation was the... Uh, Touched had had, had uh, different elements and touch points out, you know, from an on a national perspective. Also, Wendy, uh, Wendy's presentation was about opportunities all round, honestly, as opposed to uh, just one region. But Mr. Nkumalo has indicated to us that uh, they are mandated to focus uh, in the in the KZN uh, province specifically. All righty, uh, I would like to now uh, welcome uh, our next speaker to address us. Uh, on this uh, program, and uh, they are a member of the campaign, um, a member of the campaign in the travel and tours space. Uh, you know, his name is Komet uh, Mudimela, and he is director, Touch Let's Go, Touch Let's Go Travel Tours Agency, a proudly South African member, and uh, Komet is going to uh, briefly take us through how the lockdown uh, situation has impacted his business, whether negatively or positively, and, uh, and how important it is for locals to support local domestic travel as opposed to traveling internationally. We did touch on that a little bit with Wendy, but we left the crux of the matter to you uh, as, as, as a travel agent, uh, Comet, welcome, and uh, please uh, go ahead. We, will, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Happy. Um, it really feels good to be here. I really appreciate. By the way, I am a tour operator, uh, which means I make short left packages, and then I'm able to work with a traveling agency. Traveling agency, Obviously, they are just working on accommodations and flight bookings and stuff. So for a point of correction, we are a tour operator. We are based here in the Northern Cape in Kimberley. Um, like I said, I'm here to discuss on two subjects. Uh, um, the first one is the, the lockdown or the, the gains and the pains of lockdown because of, you know, they say from each and every negative situation or challenge, there should be something positive that one should pick up. And then secondly, it's, uh, it's about a transformation, you know, using a, a localization as a form of transformation. Those are the two subjects. Uh, to a certain extent, one felt so good about uh, the lockdown or the COVID-19 because of now we had to shift the focus from international, you know, exporting tourism, but rather, you know, uh, um, welcoming guests to come to our, to, to our place, you know, yes. So I will be touching on that a little bit later. So I remember when, when, when lockdown was first introduced or when it was announced by the president, that was last year in March. You know, when was the, that was the last time I did a, a, you know, a, a lucrative job because I was coming from a short left here in Northern Cape with Kespanyo Vest, um, which was a very, very successful uh, um, short left appointed by the SAT. Um, to take him around the Northern Cape. And as soon as we came back from the from the uh, from the short left was Kespa, and then um, that was when the lockdown was announced. I didn't know from the beginning. I believe most of us didn't know exactly what we, uh, you know what, what what was happening during that time because of we had a thought that it would be a one week or two thing, two weeks thing, and then we would back to business. So, so 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 it was a very difficult thing, you know, to to, to have to deal with. And then, firstly, when that happened, when that happened. Uh, uh, we had to deal with a whole lot of things. And then in two weeks time, that when I realized that, no, 
we are in a deep problem here because of look we are a top operator and we work with short left within the within, we are a national we are a national top operator by the way i heard uh, uh, mr ku mr kumalo there mentioning look a package uh, a package what is this i package a kwazulu natala most importantly most of my people they like to go into devon i'm going to devon so i was we i was hoping that uh, since while i'm sailing devon i would also get something from that you know those relief funds that we are having there in the office because of or oh, why not because of i'm part of the people who put you know devon on the map so 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 that's what basically happened there and then can, 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 can you just hold on for me just hold on for me a little bit okay so that's what basically happened there at the at the at, at the, when i came back from the from the lockdown and then there was the issue of refunds that we have to deal with we have to there were issues of cancellation that took place even at some point some of our uh, uh, our clients they they, they we, we got threatened by the way because of remember now people have paid people have done this and that and what not and the trip is not going anymore and we're not too sure when is it going to go that was when that uh, um introduction the travel later campaign was was introduced don't cancel rather postpone and then travel at a later stage we are trying to convince our people to say look because of remember you buy a package at 4000 rand due to the associations that we belong to or a network of you know uh, um, operations within the industry you negotiate client uh, prices on behalf of your clients and all of that and all of that so that you can make a nice package for your clients and then you give it away immediately they cancel everything comes back all your markups and whatnot so you understand there's a lot of chaos that is taking place there because of you pay 5,000 rand, but necessarily the tour obviously is going to be of 4,000 based on the negotiations and whatnot and whatnot. And then you remember you would have to find that money to put it, you know, to edit on what the client had paid in order to pay there, you know. So it was very difficult to a certain extent. We got threats in terms of saying, look, we're going to take you to Facebook, we're going to talk about you. It was a very scary, you know, environment that we have to soldier on. But nonetheless, we had, we had managed during the COVID period. And there were quite a number of activities, you know, there were groups that were taking place, the tourism groups, the Northern Cape uh, provincial group was there, the other one, South African tourism was there. This is basically just to be involved and then to be aware of what is happening, you know, the development as far as all of the chaos that is taking place. Because once you lose sight, as far as that is concerned, you will definitely get lost in terms of how to prepare for when, you know, uh, um, the, the business is opening and 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 uh, how because of obviously we are not going to package tourism the way we used to so for for us to be aware of that we have to attend all of this now one has to invest in in, in your four ir you know which came earlier than we thought basically you know so that means everything goes on zoom webinars and whatnot and if you are not part of that remember it also affects as far as because you must have resources you know that you would have to, to accompany you as far as you are entering that journey of look, everything goes for IR now. So what are you going to do? So you must data issues, you know, your gadgets that you are using, some of them like this morning, how are struggling and things like that. So information does not reach out to most, you know, from particularly people who are in the villages, you know, people who are in the township. So it was a very difficult situation. We negotiated, you know, as far as far refunds are concerned, cancellations, are concerned and then we worked on postponing some of them some of them they ridicule us you know but we understand we have to contain them we have to negotiate our way out you know as far as that is concerned so we, we through the engagement that took place during that particular period because of i had to rely on the engagement you know your whatsapp groups as far as tourism is concerned the support structures this kind of webinars that were taking place, you know, and there were there were other opportunities that were presented to us in terms of programs. The program that uh, uh, we spoke about earlier on, uh, uh, one of the speakers spoke about it earlier on, which of which I'm part of the national mentorship program between the TBSA and SAT. You know, I'm part of that. I'm I'm quite happy to be part of that program because of those particular programs. Those are the ones that immediately when you think of giving in, and then you think about the support structures they you know, they fuel energy within you so that you are able to, you know, to, to, to be creative and then come back into the market. So I got involved in quite a number of uh, uh, programs that were, you know, virtual. And then also last week we attended the ATT, which was a very successful program, the African Travel and Tourism Summit that took place in uh, three cities. 
you know, um, um, in South Africa. So uh, from, from that, you could pick, you know, because of there were sessions, there were breakaway sessions that were taking place in terms of what is to come at a later stage. So one got equipped as far as that is concerned in terms of how now are we going to prepare each other, you know, so that when we come back, you see, as a tour operator, you must understand I rely on products because of I have to rely on Protea Hotel to say, no, we are functioning, you can come. I have to rely on uh, uh, Moses Mabida to say, Moses Mabida, no, we do the jump, we do the sky car. Uh, I have to, you know, I have to engage with quite a number of people. You know, the beaches are open or whatnot. Unless those things, they function, that means there's no business at all. Now, you see, it was a problem. Every time you want to call this, this, no, we are on suspension at the current moment. We are not working and whatnot and what. And you must understand, even when they open, you are not too sure because of, you must do a product check. You know, because that is very important. You must we sell to, to our clients and then they always complain when they get there, they don't find what they want. But if you do not visit the site yourself, it becomes very difficult because of it's quite difficult to package something that you do not know. So we went through a whole lot of 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 of, of, of challenges as far as that is concerned, and then I relied on this uh, uh, webinars that I, I I spoke about. I relied on this engagement, these platforms, uh, the, the 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 WhatsApp platforms that are that I spoke about earlier on, just to make sure that I remain, you know, visible. You know what they say, they say offsite. Once you become offsite, everybody forgets about you, you know? So out of sight, out of your mind. So I had to, to engage with other, with other uh, uh, colleagues that are working within the tourism industry. So one of the good things, like I said, that I rely on product. One of the good things that came out of that is to say, look, uh, uh, you have to go back as far as now the gains, of the lockdown, you know, the collaboration element that came out of the pivoting element. Those are the languages that we hit a lot in terms of the webinars, you know, go back and sit down and then look back at what you can do, what you can do. Maybe this is an opportunity for you to introduce something. People were doing, you know, uh, um, they were moving away from tourism and converting their establishment into something else so that there can be a COVID test or whatever that is taking place so that they can accommodate people. You know, as a tour operator, you sit down and then you think about it and then what is it that they can, you, can, you can come up with. To a certain extent, I'm still engaged with my local because of, I'm a tour operator from a rural village. Uh, 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 and I heard a lot about, about transformation. I heard a lot about the VTSDs, the village township and small dorm tourism initiatives that were coming, you know, because of always sell the cities, like I indicated, you are about Cape Towns and your Devons, and then we forgot about our own backyard where the richest, you know, of history is lying. And then through all of those engagements, then I, I, I picked up that there should be something that I should do, you know, in, in, in order to avoid relying on other products owners. Because when they lock doors, then what are you going to do? So I came up with an initiative. Um, we are currently busy with the, with the ranch at home, though it's still at an infancy stage, you know, um, trying to develop something with the community. It's a community concept. Because of they say, you know, once you walk away from your community, then uh, particularly when you work with tourism related, because of in its nature, tourism, it's a, it's a social thing, it's a community program, it's a community project, because of you have to involve all of those people, because of there are a lot of talents, there are a lot of skills, there are a lot of knowledge that can be shared within the community. It's just that you are not placing it in the forefront of our people so that they can see what we have. So from that particular period, that's what happened. You said, look, think about something that probably uh, in the long run you can rely on or you can, you can do. And then I came with the ranch, which will need a lot of support, you know, institutions like a Proudly South African, because this is a Proudly South African product. You know, other associations that one are working with, like your SATAS, you know, um, your Sato Vito, there's another organization called Sato Vito, which is doing a great work in terms of your South African township and village tourism promotion. They are, they are, they are doing, because their focus is about institutions or, or operators who are mostly based in the, in the rural areas. So I'm trying to get them, you know, involved in this particular program because of, like I said, it's a community concept, which when it can get all the support that it needs, it can move forward and it can bring difference you know, to, 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 to the community. Because of I'm talking about culture, I'm talking about the product that stays there. I'm talking about your storytelling in terms of how the place came to be. I'm talking about the landscape. You know, it's a good thing to a certain extent, I was saying to somebody that actually this uh, COVID thing in, to a certain extent, it came with a positive because of our villages have been neglected for a very long time. But at this point in time, 
it's about time that we go back to our villages because what they offer that spacious you know, uh, uh, element that we're always talking about. They offer that environment that we are talking about, the nature and the tranquil in the villages and things like that. They, those are the natural elements that, you know, fight with a, quite a number, not only COVID, but quite a number of diseases. So if much focus can be shifted towards those particular products, then it will be easier. I was listening to one of the speakers last week at ATT. She was indicating, I think she was from Somali, she indicated that you know they, they've got a very nice program project that is going on there in, in, in Somali uh, uh, with, with, with the locals. You know, people come and stay in, in they have converted their concept into a community project, and then now the community within the Somali uh, uh, areas they are able to benefit out of that because of the activities are taking place. They even the mice product, you know, your meetings, incentive, conference, and exhibitions. We were talking with Amanda, who is heading that particular board within SAT, that look, we, we, we must move our mice product, we must move you know, towards, towards your villages. We know we've got the challenges of infrastructure, roads, you know, we're talking about as things like the, the gadgets. As much as there has been much uh, investment in other areas within our government, and things, all of this can also be shifted from there to those particular areas because of now you can imagine if a mice project is taking place in a village or in a township what is going to happen the the ripple of of of, of the value chain there that is going to take quite a number of people are going to benefit in that regard but i was happy to hear amanda mentioning that they have identified three places in each province you know to 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 start this uh, uh, particular uh, uh, initiative that they came about so <laughs> Those are the challenges that came through and this, uh, the creativity that came through during the, the, the COVID period, you know, I'm having this ranch that is, that, 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 that is you know, uh, slowly but surely coming up, engaging with the traditional or the tribal authorities from my village to say, look, this is what we are doing. How best can you assist us in this regard, you know? So, and I will also like to call upon your, 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 your PSA to make you know the significant contributions taking their campaign because of there are quite a number of things that we look at you know uh, uh, when we say you want to host people when you host people people want a, a clean environment you know people want an, an attractive environment so that they are able to 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 to, to visit the area and 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 also those attractions and sites that need to be refurbished you know they need to be redeveloped. So, but when you come together with our, uh, our provincial LTA, your local tourism authorities, you know uh, the PSA to say, look, let us just take this to one of the villages and do a campaign there, and then you know in collaboration with our local T, our local tour operators in that. Way. In in a way, it brings awareness at the very same time that you know because of. It, it, it involves an element of teaching and education. The reason why you are not hosting people is because of your place is not clean. These are the, you know, the effects, the things that are you too much. And then once the education element comes, comes on board there, then it comes much more easier, you know, for people to say, look, let us keep our place clean. And then so that we can attract people from the outside. And then the last part, which is now transformation uh, uh, that I'm talking about that, look, transformation, it's, 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 it's like I said earlier on, it's, it's been a very long time coming to, to, we've been talking about transformation is not only introduced now. I think this subject has been here for a very long time. It's just only now that COVID is showing us flame that we really need to transform the economy because of, I only realized that now that I need transformation because of my packages. They always go outside, but they do not remain here. People don't come to where I stay or where I operate, I rather package your urban and cities. So, so, so if much more focus and much more collaboration can, 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 can be brought forward in terms of saying, how can we boost uh, uh, focus on the local communities at the village and township, that would be much more better. Thank you, Ms. Happy. I can see that obviously I'm overlapping on your time there. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Kwame. Thank you. I just want to quickly say before before we take the next, the last speaker, is that I love your energy. Uh, you are just, you didn't look at, at, at COVID-19 and you thought, what am I going to do now? And then you blame the world and you were very upset and, and oh, you went out there and found a way to still remain 
uh, you said still remain relevant and still remain visible, you said, which is, which is really so commendable uh, 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 comment. And, 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 and I do take, uh, I admit that I made a, an error in the beginning. You are not a tour, uh, a, you are a tour operator that works with travel agents. Uh, which is great. So I do get that. But thank you so much for uh, for sharing your story. Uh, so, so in a nutshell, you would say that you, uh, your association with Proudly South African does work in your favor. Am I correct? Just briefly, yeah. You are muted. You're muted. No, yes, definitely. Yes, it does work because of the look at credibility. There are a lot of people, if you are not associated with these stakeholders, then it becomes a, a problem for, for, for yeah. validity of the product. So indeed, because of we have our proudly South African, even you can see even on my water here, <laughs> I've got a proudly South African speaker that is there. So it's Great. everywhere yeah. where, we, where we operate because it should be visible, then it gives you a credibility. Fantastic. We'll chat to you just now again after we hear from Rosemary. Thank you so much, Comet. Your contribution is greatly uh, appreciated. Welcome uh, to the to the to the to the chat, um, a, 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 um, Rosemary. Sorry, I, I, I lost my train of thought there. That, welcome. Uh, next speaker is Rosemary Anderson, National Chairperson, Fedasa who is going to look into the importance of procuring locally in terms of guests, guest amenities and, uh, uh, you know, lobbying government and industry, uh, you know, in that space. Uh, so all of those things that you get in hotel rooms, TVs, uh, shampoos and towels and, you know, the works, uh, Rosemary is going to look into that. Thank you so much, Rosemary. We do, we are aware that we're running uh, out of time and apologies that we've taken into your time, but please go ahead. And, and share with us what you would like us to hear. Thank you so much. Not a problem, Happy. Lovely to be here today. So first of all, I'll talk about the importance of procuring locally in terms of guest amenities. So tourism and hospitality, it's an apex industry with long and deep supply chains and tentacles into many sectors, including vehicle manufacturing, um, agriculture, fuel, uh, other manufacturing like textiles, towels, linen blankets, duvets, uh, decor, fabrics, uniforms, furniture, crockery, cutlery, kitchen equipment, cleaning products, uh, guest supplies, and also services like banking, security, marketing, laundry, cleaning, catering, etc. So it's significantly wide. And for every one rand of direct GDP impacts, one rand 50 is spent on supply chain and capital. So taking account uh, above, along with the fact that hospitality and tourism has 206.5 billion annually of supply chain and capital spend in the economy annually, you can see from deducing from above why it is so important to procure products in hospitality and tourism locally. Since if we can channel the procurement locally, look at how many more jobs we'll be able to create in South Africa. And unemployment is our single biggest challenge we face in South Africa. Horrendous unemployment realities. And it's the cause of so many of our problems in South Africa in our much loved country. The difference between um, the job creation with regards to buying something locally versus imported imported are extreme, absolutely extreme in the spectrum. And all of us here today, we're fortunate, we've all got jobs and we're all in a position where we can directly influence whether other people in our country would also be able to have jobs and a better quality of life. It's our responsibility to ensure that every opportunity possible, we make the procurement decision to help our fellow South Africans be employed and allow them to fulfill their hopes and dreams and be able to give their children a future that we want for all of our children. I'd love to see organizations like Proudly SA to be more integrated into procurement departments within companies so that companies introduce policies within their procurement departments to first buy local before looking at imported products or services. It needs to be made easy for companies to find and source locally manufactured products and services. And at the moment, this isn't really the case. Um, so if I could possibly use this platform to urge Proudly South Africa and all of us together to work together in a with a dramatic catalytic campaign to acquire a massive database of every South African made product and service that is easy for people from all walks of life to be able to access both as a consumer and a supplier. 
We need to get that Proudly SA emblem out on every South African made product out there. So it's easy for consumers and businesses to see if they're made in our country and for all of us to build a culture that it's cool and the end thing to buy local. The old expression, local is lacquer, it resonates with everyone and it's happy and lighthearted and fun. We could keep this much loved expression as we go on with all of our words in this regard. It would also be wonderful to see a, a massive short, medium and long-term campaign spearheaded by Proudly South Africa, but with partners from all sectors of business and government, labor, social and our religious sectors. A campaign that is shared on all platforms of social media as well, well as all mainstream media, literally capitalizing every part of communication in our country that is possible. And to do it in a fun, humorous way, but at the same time, which educates the public and business and how their decision to buy local will have a direct positive impact on their lives. These benefits we need to identify so that the man in the street actually can actually resonate and really understand that they will have access to more jobs and businesses if, we, if they buy local. And also from a company point of view too, that companies are forced to actually buy local because if they can actually buy local, then there will be more jobs out there and there will be more consumer spend to spend on their companies. So it would be great if we could make the campaign fun, relatable, down to earth and upbeat so everyone can directly see how buying local will positively impact on their lives and businesses. Um, in the many spin-offs from not only creating jobs, but in all the other many ways of reducing employment, which will improve a vast array of, of negatives in South Africa, it'll help reduce crime, it'll improve our citizens' mental health, um, it'll help with the um, reducing the abuse of women and children, all the way to improving the balance sheet so that it is more, more money is generated by our government, which in turn can spend money on all our services from healthcare to roads to government infrastructure, such as water and sanitation. We will become a wealthier country, which will allow all of us the benefits that wealthier countries are able to enjoy. I would also love proudly SA to engage with the Department of Trade and Industry, whereby the department could advise on products and services that are currently imported and of high yields, um, positively um, very beneficial products that they could then actually be manufactured in South Africa. We could then have the, they could give us, they could give us, identify the opportunity that we as South Africans could manufacture them. This could also be a major job creator. Um, and on a slightly different note, hospitality and tourism employs about 1.5 million people in South Africa. But it's estimated that one in seven South Africans put puts food on the table, either directly or indirectly through tourism. If we can entice more international tourism to our shores, we could reduce unemployment in our country significantly. I believe that if our tourism department, now led by Minister Sisulu, could embrace and joy, join hands with us like never before with our main industry players in tourism and hospitality, together, we could harness all of our joint expertise and we could market South Africa like it has never been marketed before and create millions of jobs. I've also been asked to talk to you about lobbying government and industry. Um, what we've had to do as Fit House in the past 18 months is quite a significant amount of lobbying. Um, we actually have a very good relationship with government and um, we are able to um, at the same time have a good relationship with Mark, with government but at the same time if things actually we feel things aren't um, fair or they're damaging to tourism and hospitality then we do engage with government and we bring this to their attention and have honest conversations in this regard. Um, a good example would be in January this year the Department of Employment and Labour put out a notice in the Government Gazette that the bargaining council would be extended to non-parties. What this would mean in reality is that hospitality companies, all of them excluding accommodation, um, who currently fall under the bargaining council um, would end up with an immediate um, over 20% cost to company regarding employee costs. Obviously, everyone wants employees to earn more and have better working conditions. However, to induce a plus 20% increase in cost to company of employee costs during a pandemic and a severe recession um, after not being able to trade for over a year just made no financial sense. So we had an honest conversation with the department, but they informed us that since the matter had already been gazetted, we'd have to go to the courts to stop this being enacted. So as per the department's advice, we took out a successful urgent interdict against the department 
um, Fidhans took out the, uh, the interdict against the Department of Employment and Labor, and that put the matter in abeyance. And currently the matter is to be heard early next year um, with the department. And um, hopefully we will be able to have the whole rule set aside because they legally, the department doesn't have the necessary 50% plus one, which they require. So Fidhasa lobbies with government in a positive way and when need be, then we, we, we take on um, another realm like we were advised to in that case. With regards to um, from March last year, we were also very involved in Fidhasa played a leading role in the establishment of the COVID-19 health and hygiene safety protocols um, and the Travel Safe Eat Safe app, which has been accepted by both public and private sector as the guideline on which tourism and hospitality businesses can function in the new COVID world safely. From you know, also in the past 18 months, what we've also done is we've had to put pressure on government to lift restrictions on our tourism and hospitality businesses and to allow us to trade in a financially viable way. So we've done this by using direct lobbying and also data-led uh, media releases such as Stats South Africa figures. We actually bring it to the government's attention as to how negatively our industry has been affected and what we need to do in order to be able to continue training, um, trading uh, financially viably. The other way FedHouse are also um, lobbies government is, for example, uh, we recently appeared on the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on the matter of government's intention of introducing the National Roads Traffic Amendment Act, which amongst other things would prohibit the outright consumption of alcohol by motor vehicle operators on our public roads. Um, this legal limit uh, currently allows, our current legal limit allows motorists to have 0 0.05 grams per 100 mils, but the new bill adopted will have a zero tolerance approach. So um, Fedhasa at this particular engagement um, put pertinent points across that even by using mouthwash, for example, or enjoying a brandy tart and even having a glass of wine the night before might lead to a driver being found um, to be over 0%. And this would put local and international travelers who in unintentionally broke the law in a vulnerable position. We also further highlighted our concerns that unscrupulous law enforcement officials may capitalize on the situation. So it's our belief that the 0% alcohol limit would damage domestic and international tourism and hospitality in South Africa significantly. So we're really lobbying government in that regard. There's also the matter of the employment equity, um, new uh, quotas which are coming out. We've worked with advocate Jan Munich um, on engagements. We've presented to the Department of Employment and Labor. We actually, at the end of this month, actually putting forward a proposal to the departments where we can actually achieve the same um, results, but in a different way, because currently the way it has been, um, the way it's been formatted, it's very difficult for smaller businesses to comply. And in some cases impossible to meet the criteria. So, and in that case, the, the result would be the businesses would be forced to make alternative arrangements and the transformation goals outlined in the new legislation would not be achieved. Um, we also, um, have helped with regards to um, restaurants who've been unable to help their um, to pay the rentals with their landlords. So we have a, um, partnered an initiative with business partners and the Sakuma Fund, whereby Fidhasa um, helps independent um, restaurants who meet certain criteria to apply for an interest-free 12-month rental loan um, agreement. So as part of this initiative, landlords also must extend those restaurateurs a 25% discount. So their financial benefit is amplified and the loan provides support for businesses who need help um, and have got a good chance of making it, but just need this extra little bit of help. So that's also, that's another way that we actually engage as Fidhasa. Um, I'm not quite sure time-wise how we are, if we're running out there, I can actually mention more things. But for example, um, the other thing which we've also engaged very much so with is with regards to business interruption insurance. It's been a hot potato in our industry the past year. And Fidhas has added our voice to the media debates, putting pressure on insurers out there who failed the hospitality clients um, by refusing to pay business interruption claims timelessly, and in some cases, not at all. And while we believe the pressures had some positive results, we feel that the situation was resolved in an entirely unsatisfactory way by the insurers, and that many hospitality businesses could have been saved had insurers treated their clients fairly. So this is an example of where we also intervene. I would like to make the exception of our insurance 
who were very good and actually paid in, uh, their clients actually out straight away with no dragging of heels, unlike the other ones. Um, finally, as Fedhasa, not only do we try to lobby with government, but we also try to help reduce costs for our industry and our members by lobbying government and businesses. And we've partnered with a number of organizations to provide discounts and rebates for our industry. Um, so I hope I've given you, been able to give you a bit of an overview of Fedhasa's lobbying government and industry today. Um, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks. Uh, very well received. Thank you so much for all the your thoughts um, around how we can make a difference and the work that you do and all the suggestions you made. Uh, you know, in all the various aspects of the of the industry, I do see that there's just one comment that I would like my colleague um, uh, Janine to uh, to to make regarding our work with the DTIC and how we lobby. Uh, the DTIC as policymakers and some of the stakeholders in the government uh, space. But I'm going to take Wendy's hand first. Um, I think Wendy would like to make a comment on one or two things that you mentioned. Wendy, please go ahead. Thank you so very much. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to chat to Rosemary offline and I'll just get some clarity on some of those um, relationships that she feels are so fruitful that she has with government. I think we can support each other um, I'll, I'll definitely engage with you. I've got some other um, meetings with government coming up in the next two weeks, which maybe Rosemary can be included on. So no problem. Thank you for that. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Wendy. And this is the purpose of some of these discussions we have. These are the linkages uh, that we encourage as proudly South African, because who knows, uh, you know, when you do get together, Wendy and Rosemary, uh, you might just cook up, uh, you know, something that's going to really, really, you know, make a difference uh, in areas that are, that are still remaining challenges in the in the industry. Janine, would you like to quickly make a comment about the work that we do uh, with uh, lobbying government and the work that we do uh, in the public and, and private uh, sectors, including the work we do with the DTIC, uh, just briefly? Yes, 100% happy. Great, uh, so thank, you. thank you so much. We do work with uh, a number of um, of, of departments whereby we look at the value chains that they support and uh, we do we do on all fronts a request you know whether it be a designated space or not that they do buy local um, I'm actually apologies colleagues I'm switching my video off because I've been notified my internet connection is low so if that's okay I'll just just keep that keep that down we also we also involved in the master plans um, that, uh, that, that, that looks at policy issues. We're looking at challenges that affect service providers, manufacturers, um, in order to, to see what it is that's keeping them from flourishing. But in every instance where we engage with government, we're not only looking at ways to secure offtake agreements, so getting the private sector to, to support their own, but we're also working with uh, the public sector to see where we can designate um, uh, additional services or, man, uh, or, or products, et cetera. So that, um, so that uh, government, when they also buy, I mean, when they fly, do they fly a local airline? You know, that kind of conversation we do have with them. Um, so, so we are working, working very closely with them. And then whenever there is a, an opportunity, um, whether it be um, um, an initiative that they're hosting in terms of a competition, or if they are, we're working very closely with, with various departments whereby we are working with them to, to, to also get a unified voice out there. I'm thinking of the Department of Small Business Development, for instance. So, so I think we can strengthen, um, we can still strengthen the relations with, with the tourism side of things, um, for sure. But, but for us, uh, you know, our interest as proudly as saying is really to lobby for the support of local manufacturers and service providers. We also have to be cognizant that we don't step on the toes of, of, our, of our sister organization, organization, SA Tourism, for instance. So we have to be, we, we, we really do um, lobby. We, uh, we, our, our interest is really in terms of, of getting companies to buy from one another, government to buy from, from, um, um, from, uh, from the local service providers and manufacturers, and then also for consumers to support, uh, to support local. But um, with, whenever that is involved, that's where, that's where we step in. I hope I've answered the, the question. And we're working very closely with other, I must say, with other with other unions, um, I mean, we 
we are lobbying that uh, they are, you know, uh, uh, we're working with the unions very closely, uh, mostly COSATU affiliated unions, um, to make sure that um, to to make sure that they lobby, uh, you know, um, lobby uh, for the support of their their own. So 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 we're also working closely with them in that regard. So I'd be very happy to to work with you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Happy. Thank you so much, Jillian. And you've just confirmed the fact that as proudly South African, we need friends everywhere. There's no way that we would be able to spread the by no by local ethos or, or by local narrative rather to South Africans uh, if we don't uh, partner and if we don't have friends. So Rosemary, thank you so, so much. I do want to say though that you hit the nail on the head as well when you spoke about this massive, massive consumer campaign that you believe that uh, should be uh, you know, spearheaded by a proudly South African that speaks to everybody, consumer, whether you consumer, public sector, private sector, anybody to you know, to via all sorts of above the line uh, uh, platforms and below the line platforms where when you listen to the radio, there's buy local this. When you see on television, you see buy local. When you open up a newspaper, digital platforms, we agree with you. In fact, a part of me feels like you work in our office. It's like you're a little, you know, you're a fly on the wall and you're listening in on some of the conversations we have. And, and, and I must just point out that, you know, for that kind of thing, if you're in the marketing space in the comms world, you would know that it takes a lot of money, uh, you know, to really make it impactful, you know, to really, really uh, um, ensure that the campaign that you put out there, uh, every South African, irrespective of where they are in the country, they take ownership of it. It really, you know, our, our marketing budgets are, budgets are very limited, but with yeah. the very limited budgets that we have, in fact, for the next three years, this being the second year, our, our, yes. That's that's why I, I really think, and that's why I also feel the same with marketing South Africa as a tourism destination. Yes. We've got yeah. to join hands because there's yeah. no way do you have the budget big enough to do what you want to achieve. Yes. It actually helps South Africa. And the same thing with marketing South Africa as a tourist destination. Our yeah. tourism department does not have that budget. However, if we joined hands with all yes. of our different operators, so that's why I would love everyone, all the big companies from mm. Sassel all the way Every down day. to International, yeah. buy yeah. local. Okay, and we all combine budgets to together. That's why I mentioned together. You spearhead it and all of us come on board to actually together with all of our expertise and money to actually achieve something that we've never achieved before. Because unemployment is our single biggest problem. It's going to it's going to sink our country if we don't do something urgently. If we don't absolutely and that collaboration would be an a game changing movement. I would call it a movement. Me lucky. Me. Happy go lucky, I'm going to call you <laughs> and see what we can do. But as we conclude this discussion, guys, we need, we could talk the whole day about the, the, the tourism industry because, we, you know, it, it doesn't matter who you are on this uh, platform, you can't divorce yourself from it. One way or another, even if you don't work directly in it, but one way or another, as a consumer, it does affect you. Uh, so, 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 you know, there's so much to talk about about this particular industry in particular. And before we, 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 I can't see any other comment on or questions on the platform. I do see though a lot of people on the line requesting that we share the recording with them and we share the presentations. In regards to the recording, shortly uh, after this, later today, the recording will be on YouTube. So you're very welcome to source it from there. But in terms of the presentations, we're happy to email them to you. And in the context of what we spoke about now, and as I do my closing comments before I say uh, thank you to the speakers, before you go speakers, I'd like the technical team to put on the screen a, uh, a, a, a slide of, the, of our Living Lekke Locally campaign. We are embarking on a new campaign for this year. It is called Living Lekke Locally. And we are launching this to the media on Thursday and to the South Africans at large. And it'll be on uh, you know, broadcasting platforms. It'll be on radio. It'll be on digital platforms. And the long and short of this campaign is that um, uh, you know we are we have, we think we have found in the absence of big budgets, but we think we have found a way uh, to communicate to South Africans a way in which 
will be relatable to South Africans in terms of what we mean when we say local is lacquer. And the narrative of this campaign is that we are showcasing to South Africans that you can read local, you can travel local, you can wear local, you can watch local content on television, you can listen to local content on radio, you can wear local designs uh, and, and local clothes from local retailers, you can eat local, like I said, you can go to local hotels, you can drive locally assembled cars, you can use a local smartphone, you can use a local uh, iPad, um, buy local furniture, buy local tiling, uh, buy local paint, buy everything and anything that we consume anyway, every day as South Africans, uh, you know, but what we're trying to demonstrate to South Africans is that all of this, we can source locally. We don't have to look far outside of our borders. It is right here at home. And this campaign coming up on Thursday underpins our campaign last year called Game Time, where we were asking South Africans in the midst of COVID, when borders were closed, that we had to rely on products that are made locally. Uh, and we lived, we were okay uh, for a good few months without, in the absence of imports. I see the team uh, was not able to, oh, they're sharing the screen. There it is. Just here. This is it. Living Lekker Locally, which is a launch of a campaign that we're launching on Thursday. And it speaks to all of that. And we're hoping that once everybody has seen it and it's out in the public domain, we will all relate with it and make a conscious decision the next time we go uh, to do uh, shopping and, uh, and, and, and choose to procure local uh, you know, procure, uh, you know, in favor of local products that are out there in our stores and shelves and in, in anywhere else. Thank you so much. May I please ask all the speakers to have their cameras on as we do our closing remarks and we say goodbye. We thank you for your time. We have run about 15 minutes um, over time. We're most grateful. May I please uh, request that we back online and uh, Rosemary, your 60 second closing remarks, please. I think that proudly South Africa could literally turn South Africa around. And I think if you spearhead things and you get all of us who are very willing participants to actually back you um, together, we can do the most remarkable things. And I think the fact that you were started with the idea from Madiba, that's what we need to return to, to his spirit. Um, I just think it can't be anything. And I'm very proud to for, for to be associated with proudly South Africa. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rosemary. We appreciate your time. We do not take it for granted. You could have been anywhere today, but you chose to be with us and share uh, your knowledge in the industry with us. We thank you so, so much. Uh, take care of yourself. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kumalo, your closing remarks. I think you muted. Sorry, I was talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've just seen an opportunity for collaboration uh, on the presentation that was made both by Sasa and Proudly SA. Uh, collaboration is very, very important if you want to turn the situation around in the sector. There are opportunities that I've seen there. Very soon I will be in contact with uh, our colleagues so that we can forge partnerships in terms of uh, the work that we do uh, in the province as well as nationally. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And uh, we, are, we, are, we are ready and waiting. Uh, like I alluded earlier on, proudly South Africa needs friends everywhere. Uh, this narrative is not going to spread itself. It, it will take more than us as a campaign. So. Uh, you know, your warm um, embrace is welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. We will be in touch. Thank you for your time. Much appreciated. Uh, okay. Wendy, I see you on the move. Fixing the country. <laughs> uh, I think Wendy is driving. I think I saw her in a car. Yeah. Ah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Um, and I think the, the key aspect moving forward is that we really have to rebuild local tourism. We've got to keep motivating each other to share those nuances and to be able to rebuild the industry by creating jobs. And sweet and short. And that's all there is to it, honestly. Mm -hmm. Let's not try and uh, 
Uh, at times, there is, is it, it isn't necessary to reinvent the wheel. Thank you so much, Wendy. We couldn't agree with you. And I think yeah. also just for everybody to remain faithful, you know, we're going to rebuild the country, people are going to return to works, we're going to rebuild businesses. Yes, this too shall pass. We have to believe in it. This too right. has to pass. We will be okay again. Thank you so much, Wendy. Exactly. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Comment your closing remarks, please. Thank you very much, uh, Sis Wendy. I really appreciate um, for, for the platform that you have given out. The only thing that I can say to all of you guys and everybody who's watching is like, please let us travel locally. Let us use our local tour operators that have been out of business for a very, very long time. So uh, um, we, we've got packages that are available. We can touch us. We are available on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can visit us there. We are part of the uh, Short Left Travel Week last week promoting uh, um, South Africa as a destination that should be visited. Some of our, our products, we can still find them there because of Though the travel with promo has ended, we had taken a decision to continue collaborating with other product holders. So please visit us and visit South Africa. Make use of Touchless Go travel and tours to tours. Thank you so much. Thank you me. wouldn't be an entrepreneur, a good entrepreneur, if you don't hold in a marketing line and a you know and sell your product. <laughs> Well done. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kamet. Well Definitely. done. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Pagamile Shazo. Please, uh, your patting shot. Okay. Uh, while Pamela may have stepped off the call, Janine, uh, may I may I ask you to give your patting shot? Uh, thank thank you, you so much. Thank you, Happy, and thank you to all the speakers and and all the um, all the attendees that joined the call today. And by local, please, everybody. Thank you. Great job. Thank you so much, Janine. Thank you so much, everybody. Every one of you that connected on the Zoom platform, uh, we're streaming live on Facebook. Thank you. We see you are there. Thank you so much. And a, and a, and a, and a really warm appreciation. And, and thank you to, speak, to all our speakers who are here today and spent a valuable time with us and made a valuable contribution. Thank you, everybody. Keep well, keep safe, sanitize, wear your masks. Keep uh, you know social distancing and uh, and uh, see we'll see you again soon. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.